so now I'm going to talk about uh, the um, uh, buffers, what kind of chemicals will help you to um, keep your proteins soluble. In terms of compatibility, when you choose buffers, of course, now you talk <coughs> about compatibility of your protein sample buffer to IF uh, focusing. And um, IF focusing, since we're dealing with a really weakly charged proteins, you don't want a lot of other charged uh, um, molecules in your protein sample to compete with the proteins in terms of, you know, moving force. So it will be nice if you can, can um, avoid charged chemicals. In terms of denaturing agents, the commonly used uh, ones, the urea, okay, at a very, really high um, concentration, 9 molar, anywhere from 7 to 9 molar of urea. And, um, and also later people start to use, also add thiol urea into it. I will show you why, because it helps you to, to solubilize more proteins, especially membrane proteins. And detergents. And we're trying to um, um, use non-charged um, and uh, detergents uh, or um, non-ionic detergents, or at least zwitter um, ionic and, um, detergents. And like chaps, chaps is my favorite. It's very expensive though, um, and uh, usually at the concentration of two to four. Um, I, I use two, but for if you have really a lot of membrane proteins and, and you you can increase it to four percent, but usually people do not use more than four percent. Okay, ASB and uh, fourteen is really good for membrane proteins, and SB three to ten um, it's also an option, but I usually don't touch it. Reducing agent. Uh, usually 1% of DTT, okay, but DTT uh, can be charged, okay, and uh, or 2 millimolar TPP. I will, sh I will show you later why this is, a, this is a, a, another option of this. Finally, we need the carrier amphalites in there, okay. I, I, told, I told you that we actually established the pH already in the IPG strip, but why, well, why we still need a little bit carrier amphalite? Actually, the name actually tells you this amphalite actually helps you to solubilize these proteins during the run. Okay, and you don't have to add a lot. If you if it's a liquid IEF focusing, we need two percent amphalite. In a gel format, we need only two two point uh, point two percent, ten times uh, one tenth of the of, of that. But this helps you actually solubilize the protein during the run. Finally. You need protease inhibit to keep the integrity of your proteins. That's that's one of the reason why people use um, add thiol urea to, to this um, to uh, the sample buffer. And this is the uh, E. coli sample extracted uh, in nine molar urea and it displayed them in, on 2D gel. If you use uh, a combination of urea thiol urea, what do you find? This extra spots of membrane proteins. So this is a, this is a reason why you know, uh, especially for me, I deal with uh, brain tissue. I always add thiourea in there because there are a lot of membrane proteins and I'm interested in, in brain tissue. And of course, DTT is a well-known uh, reducing reagent, and it, it breaks the disulfide bond. And breaking disulfide bond helps you to solubilize the proteins, but. Uh, the um, DTT can be ionized uh, at a certain pH, and uh, this can cause problems, especially in the basic range. Okay, in the high pH, it can be ionized. Once it's ionized, it has negative charge, and it moves to yeah, it moves to the acidic range. What what happens is that your then your basic range deplete uh, has the DTT depletion. Okay, this 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 disulfide band can then form again randomly, and that's big no no. That's a very bad thing because then the disulfide band not only reform again within the protein, but also you know it's a cross linking of the protein uh, between different proteins. That's a very bad thing. That's why sometimes you see 
start streaking in the basic range. So how do you avoid that? Like Thank you for the introduction of the next one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the, this is what I'm talking about. So uh, this is pH 6 to 12, and sometimes you see this bad uh, horizontal streaking in the basic area. That's that's DTT depletion. So. Question over here: Is yes. reoxidation happening in the gel? Yes. Or in the microscope? In the gel. In the gel, in the gel run. In the I, I, uh, focusing run. The protein migrating and suddenly DTT is gone because DTT is smaller. It runs faster than protein, right? The protein was behind and, and, and they stuck together, and so they can easily cross link with each other and generate this horizontal. So you'll always see it going over towards the basic side? That's right, that's right. right. Yes. So the second dimension too? Hmm? Can it happen in the second dimension? Yeah, the, once, once it uh, forms this horizontal non, sort of uh, non uh, separation. Uh, in the in the first uh, in the first dimension, the the second dimension will keep it sort of the horizontal streaks right there. And uh, so, how do you how do you solve the problem? And before before we uh, the people use a piece of uh, film paper we call wicks at the, uh, uh, at the basic end, and then put a drop of DTT in the wicks. What happens is. Uh, the these wicks serve as a DTT reservoir. It keeps feeding DTT into the IPG strip. Okay, that's that's bad, but works. TTS. Okay, but positioning your wick then would also affect. Yes, you need to stop your run and keep changing it. Um, I'll, I'll I'll show that later. Of course. Um, one one thing is we re re replace the DTT with what? With the uh, non-ionic uh, reducing reagent that is uh, TPP, tributyl phosphate, phosphine, and um, and this this thing is very effective in terms of breaking uh, the sulfur bond. So you don't need really high or 10 or 50 millimolar of DTT. You only need two millimolar of uh, TPP <coughs> to break everything. Very efficient, and it's not as expensive, but but it has disadvantages, right? And toxic, and bad smell. Uh, the TTT is already bad, but this is uh, this is worse. But the 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 uh, most bad disadvantages is not stable. It's in water. Okay, it's uh, basically degraded in probably within an hour or half an hour. The best thing to do this, let me see. Super proud focusing to the yes. So this is my favorite approach in terms of solving this issue. TPP is not stable half an hour or within uh, within an hour. Then let's make it permanent. Let's alkylate the desulfur bond after redu reduction so they cannot form again. So we use IAA. Uh, elder acetamide to to treat you know to to alkylate the the uh, so this is part of the sample prep okay not you haven't started the uh, IF yet before you add before you go there you treat with DTT or TPP and then alkylate it with IAA if you don't treat it with IAA what you end up is streaking in basic end and after you treat it IA, you get a really uh, nice, um, you know, separation of proteins in there.